guy named Chip Du Bois. He was the president. He uh, he came to me. He says we, we we were talking about we need a new project. And he said, why don't we start a Big Brothers? It wasn't Big Sisters and Big Brothers back then. It was just Big Brothers. I said, I said okay, let's do that. Now, I have a saying that says success comes in cans not cannots. We didn't come up with a bunch of excuses why it's gonna to be too hard and not make it work. So we just decided to do it. We became passionate about it after we did uh, our own local Big Brother project up on uh, for the uh, underprivileged kids up on the uh, Highland Avenue area and they were uh, there was F Force United Methodist, and I don't know what it's like up there right now, but at that time it was kind of a poor area and uh, with a lot of kids with no fathers and things like that. And uh, we became passionate and we shared that passion with Bo, and then it became our goal to raise the money. So we raised. Uh, we raised ten thousand dollars. I don't know what that would be today. Somewhere between fifty and seventy thousand dollars, I guess. Somewhere. I mean, so what happened was Bo recruited people to be on the first board of directors. This was kind of a blue ribbon uh, board of directors. One was. Uh, law partner to Senator U.S. Senator Howard Baker. One was the uh, director of the Alumni Association at UT. One was an economics professor. And Bo went out and recruited the board. So we handed this money. When we raised this money, we gave it all to them. And Bo took that money and the board and, and in essence, took the ball from there. Yeah, so, we changed locations, about, I'd say, about four times. Finally, found a place over across from the old Knoxville High School and rented a real office. And that's about the time we, we heard about a fellow named Bill Tapp. Now, Bill Tapp had just graduated, I think, from graduate school at UT. And we went to I talked to him about this, and uh, we didn't have any money. And we told him that he had, uh, we had I think we had $350 in a checking account and told him he had to raise his 7000 that we were going to pay him. And of course, he just got out of school and wasn't dumb enough to know that's going to be hard. And he said, he said, yeah. And he stayed about seven years and, and just did a real good job in establishing Big Brother. So that's, that's how we started. Just, you know, just kind of came along and we started with nothing and had nothing for a long time and had no idea. It sh be like it is now. I had no idea, but we tickled about it. Well, there was a lot of community involvement, as you can imagine, always has been, and he made the comment years and years ago that he probably spent half his time doing something community related and continue to see all the people that are impacted by what he and my mom did uh, and saw what a positive impact that was, and that's just kind of been ingrained in me, part of the Schaefer DNA, I guess you could say. And uh, it, it's, it's a blessing to be in the position to help other people. Taught me how to drive a nail, <laughs> use a screw gun and a chainsaw, all the fun stuff in life. Uh, but really most everything I, I learned either from my dad um, or my mother. And, you know, the, the hard work and integrity. And, you know, he defined character to me as what you do when people are not watching. That's what true character is. And I've obviously remembered that my whole life. Yes, I, it was when I was eight or nine years old. My daddy used to pick me up or take me to and go to the grocery store and he'd go to some bunch of houses that were under the Gay Street Bridge. Now they're not there anymore, but they were poor families. And he'd go up there and take them food took care of some of those folks up there. But then my daddy just showed me what it was like to, uh, to help people and how, how much people needed help. And so it was in my blood. Uh, well, it made me realize, <clears throat> and with my, along with my daddy, that God has placed us on the giving end. We can help give, give help to people instead of ask for help with people. And it made me realize how blessed that I was and all the big brothers were to be able to help somebody. And it wasn't expensive and it wasn't real hard to do. 
But you know, I think I used to think the real blessings in life were a nice car, a nice house, and a nice, nice life. But I finally realized the real blessing that God gives us is that He puts us on the giving end instead of the needy end, and that's the biggest blessing anybody could hope for. So that because there's so many people out there now, so many boys and girls who are just in single family, and I guess most of them are the fathers, and you just need somebody. You know, other than a mother and a father, it just takes two people. To, to Raising a family is a hard job, as you know, as we all know. And uh, it's just so important to have a mentor. I, I, uh, I, I was a mentor for another organization. It was people who had graduated from college. And, and so I was his mentor for a while. And he just told me it made a huge difference, you know, at that age. But when you're eight years old or nine or ten, man, you can have a huge influence on people. And I hope it's good. <laughs> it's quite an honor, quite an honor. And I just feel uh, honored to get it because there's a lot of folks out here putting a lot of this energy into this whole program. And I'm just a blessed man to, to be able to get it. And I, I'm, I'm just tickled to death, that's all. Because uh, just tickled, that's all. Bro, you, you're, you've always been uh, a great friend. You're one of my heroes. There's just absolutely no question about it. So excited that you are going to get this honor. It certainly is well-deserved. And uh, you're the same person uh, now as you were, as you were uh, back when we were uh, in college. So it's, it's just an honor. It's an honor for me to be any way a part of this and, and uh, uh, we just wish you the best here my friend <laughs> dad congratulations I think it's a great honor I think it's well deserved you've been a great mentor to me someone I could look up to my whole life and you've been that person to countless thousands of other people whether you realize it or not whether you'll ever meet them or not it's a great honor and a congratulations and I love you very much How are you? <laughs> um, he came up to me, um, I guess it was 2006, and said, I've got a project for you. Um, and it's associated with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And what I heard him say was, Martin, I want to do a swim for Big Brothers Big Sisters. It's going to be a mm -hmm. And he specifically slurred the number of miles he wanted us to swim. I thought he said one mile. He, of course, meant eight miles. So that's how I got uh, roped uh, into the events. Bill and Michael successfully swam Alcatraz. I like to tell my friends and clients that I swam Alcatraz. I don't complete the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, I think I got about four fifths of the way and swallowed too much water and vomited. And, what I like about Bill is this. Um, he's an Irishman. He's got that twinkle in his eye that's always present. And I actually take sunglasses to church now because when Bill approaches me and he's got a twinkle in his eye, I throw the sunglasses on and say, no, you're not going to get me. You're not going to get me. But he does. Uh, although so far, I think his next fundraiser is to swim all of Norris, which he says is about 75 miles. And so far, I've been able to say, uh, I think after the second swim, we got a t-shirt for Bill that said, just say no to Bill Jolly. And so far, so good. We shall see. His actual background is in the ministry and education. So he has a lot of skill in dealing with people. He's an excellent mediator, um, excellent listener. So he helped to get the organization through some of, some of its growing pains, its early growing pains when 
there were a number of smaller organizations in different counties and the financial realities were such that things were needing to change and uh, I know that he did a lot uh, to carefully navigate those waters to to get through and and get some of that taken care of he, he the thing that impressed me so much has always impressed me is and this goes back to big brothers big sisters is that it's always been a part of him it's always been in his heart so he was involved in this long distance swimming and then he got the idea that it would be a, ra a way to raise money he's impacted my life in many ways but certainly he has taught me about uh, commitment and dedication um, creativity uh, being create, creative and thinking of different ways to be helpful to an organization, uh, persistence. I mean, this is this is somebody who's had um, heart attacks, um, open heart surgeries, um, uh, various other health difficulties, and yet he has continued to come up with ways to contribute and to be a part of people's lives. There's a building in front of the old Knoxville High School that was the original building for big office for Big Brothers Big Sisters. And one day I was driving by and I thought, you know, and I was about uh, 30 years younger than I am now, and I thought, I need to do something for kids. I've got a lot of talent in that regard, a lot of education in that regard, and I thought I, I knew everything. And so... I wanted to find out about Big Brother, so I stopped in one day and just knocked on the door and went in. I said, well, tell me a little bit about Big Brothers, and he did such a good job of explaining what it was, it made a lot of sense to me, and I said, well, I think, uh, I've been thinking about this, and I think that I'd like to try to be a Big Brother, and uh, it's a little scary because I've never done anything like this before, and I don't have any children, and so my experience in that arena was a a little bit limited, but I thought, what the heck? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So we did a lot of interesting things, and uh, uh, to me they were interesting. And I think the thing that Harley wanted was a, a friend, someone who was non-judgmental, non-disciplinary, but somebody who could just listen to, to him talk and 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 uh, play games. Uh, any kind of thing we could do together. Right. I'm so committed to the idea that. If, if we had more people doing what the big brothers, big sisters requires, that is be a friend, a trustworthy friend, a caring friend uh, to a young man or la a young lady, that they will respond in a way, it's almost like it's in the DNA. It's, a, it's, a, it's an almost automatic response that you get uh, uh, and, and if you get them at the, the right age, which Big Brothers Big Sisters does, then they are malleable enough to be able to change even some terrible behaviors. And a lot of them are, are really uh, pretty hard people when, before they get their big brother or big sister. And uh, they come out of that altogether different. And that experience is what I think that the bigs all say I gained more than the kid gained from me, and uh, and I think that's why they, they begin. It's such a satisfying kind of an experience to be able to see that happen in a young person. Oh, uh, it makes me think you're crazy for asking me to do this, <laughs> because uh, this organization is is a uh, if. I understand it as a, a, a reflection of all the hard work that all the people, the directors, the uh, board of directors, but especially the uh, young people that are making matches and, and uh, working with the, the bigs and the littles and keeping that, that, that match uh, functioning in the, in, along the right track. Those people are the ones who deserve the award, so I'm accepting it delightfully for them. Bill, honestly what I want to say is um, you're welcome. I'm the reason that you're going into the Hall of Fame and you know that as well as I. But, uh, just kidding of course. 
Uh, the, the bottom line is this. Thank you for getting me into the, the Big Swim. Thank you for involving me with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. I have now a little by the name of Devin who is, uh, has been a joy. Uh, camps with us and in fact around the campsite one Christmas week he turned to my children and said he who digs taters eats taters repeating one of the family phrases or mottos so that was hard women to say the very least I am not going to swim 75 miles with you in Norris congratulations well deserved honor I can't think of anyone who is more deserving of being inducted into the Hall of Fame I think he has at least 35 years of commitment to the organization uh, and has served it in almost every way possible. Uh, I think the one way is he's never been employed, um, but I am so proud that he is going to be a member of the inaugural class in the Hall of Fame. And Bill, I congratulate you and we are all here just thrilled to be a part of this with you today. something to having someone look up to you and so it kind of drives a, a respect and a, a it, it drives a way that you need to act and, and you ought to be so I think it just helps us do a better job having somebody looking up to us and then when you have your own kids you, you definitely have that situation. I didn't realize what it would turn into um, at all that it would be more than just like a friend or a mentor or more of like a, an additional father figure. Um, but when he came over, we went to Burger King. We went to Burger King and, and had, a, had a meal there. Always being invited to Christmas, that was big for me. No matter what, I was always there. He'd always ask me and he'd always make sure I would, I would be there. Um, also just being a part of his family, as, it, as his family's life as they, as they grew. Being there. That was probably where I had this love and desire to have a family myself one day and hopefully be the kind of father he is to those kids. Um, he's imparted so much knowledge on me and I'm not even his child. Um, it's difficult but immensely more gratifying to, to accomplish something and know that you did it and know that there was someone there behind you cheering you on every step of the way. That was the biggest thing with me is that having someone there to say good job or I'm proud of you. That's my biggest motivator. It's somebody telling me that I can do something no matter what, and I will succeed. Because if I don't, hearing it makes me believe it. And I feel there are tons of children out there that don't know the exact same thing, but if they heard that, they would. They would know it. You know, I remember them going fishing. I know they've gone bowling. I know that Adam learned how to change oil in a car by helping Al. But it's not doing stuff that I remember. It's the constant contact over the years that Adam has had with Al. You know, Al was always calling to check on him or to do stuff, but it was just that relationship, that long-term relationship that they've built. Um, I was a single parent at the time, very, very hard, very tough, and I was very humbled knowing that someone else wanted to play a part in my child's life. So I'm forever grateful for that. Such the society is so hard on them nowadays and they need that positive reinforcement, they need the guidance, they need the love, the care, and they need to know that they can succeed in anything they want in life. They just need some people there to help them along the way and all children deserve that. Oh, I thought this book was just really, really cool and I was so tickled that Adam got to play a part in this. You know, Al wrote the book, but he let Adam write the foreword for it. It's very, very touching. and really broke my heart. I think everyone should have a copy of it and should see it and read it. My wife would read to the kids every night. I, I really didn't like to sit down and, and read to the kids every night. Um, but I would go in and tell them stories. And so that was basically uh, that the poem uh, was, a, was a long story that I used to tell the kids every night. And so 
eventually I wrote it down and turned it into a poem and said, well, at least they'll have this, you know, later on when, you know, when, you, when you're not reading bedtime stories to them anymore. And so I talked about it. Um, there was somebody that at, our, at Bush at, at work that had done a little book based on a commercial that we had done. It seemed like an easy thing to do. Um, <clears throat> so I started thinking, hey, maybe I could turn this into a little bit of a book, but that book was based on photography. And um, this is kind of a uh, fantasy story, so there wasn't, there wasn't any photography. So um, I talked to, I think Myra at the time was the president, and we started talking about maybe doing a contest to illustrate the book. And then she really jumped into it, and some of the other people you know, on the board and so forth really got involved with it. And we had a, uh, a contest to, to have the kids you know, draw uh, pictures and I mean just came out with some unbelievable pictures and artwork and um, I was really uh, really amazed at how talented you know the kids were and so you know we turned it into a book and Adam wrote the forward to it and uh, it was really moving touching you know forward that that uh, you know Adam wrote and um, my daughter did the cover of it and she's you know kind of the artsy one of our family so it kind of became a big project we are now in a position that, that we have an outstanding product that people want. We really serve the community well. Um, we, have, we have, you know, based on a lot of the work that you've done and, and the board have done, but we're in a, you know, really good financial, great financial position compared to where we've been um, with the diversity of, of giving and that sort of thing. The community has embraced us and really reaching out and helping us, and I think that's wonderful. And then the staff. Um, I think the staff, we've, we've had really top-notch staff all along, but I would say right now, I think uh, in, in my 12 years or 13 to 14 years being involved, you know, our staff have, have you know, really increased uh, their capability and, and leadership. And, um, you know, I, I don't think it's been in a better spot. So I think, you know, we've, you know, you guys keep continuing to build on what we've got. Um, and, and so you just make it better every year. And so, um, you know, I've just been blessed to be a part of that, um, watching it grow, and um, you know, it's uh, it's been a privilege for me. You know, like I said, I, I don't think there's anything more important than that one-to-one -one relationship. I, um, I was reading something the other day. That, uh, there's a study that had been done, and it's it's like a 60-year longitudinal study uh, from Harvard, and the single most important thing of happiness of the people that they've, that they've worked with over the last you know, 50, 60 years, all these people, uh, the single most important thing is relationships. And I think you know, when a child um, loses a parent uh, for whatever reason, they, you know, a, a, a boy like Adam doesn't have a father in his life, uh, somebody coming in and filling that void, um, I think it just plays a critical role at a critical time in their life. And so, um, if you really want to make a difference, you, you do something for somebody else that they can't do for themselves. Um, and I think that's what, you know, for me it's all about. It's a, it's a tremendous honor, uh, very flattered. Uh, I mean, this, uh, our organization has been around for decades and had, you know, hundreds of, you know, outstanding volunteers and leaders and board members and, and employees. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very flattered by it, humbled by it. Um, you know, it's just a, um, it means a lot to me, uh, to my family, um, you know, that, that I could be there because I think the people, um, you know, that are, um, that have been, that serve this organization, uh, you know, to kind of be in that Hall of Fame is, is a great honor. So I just want to thank everybody for that. Al, congratulations. You are so deserving of this award. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for believing me. Thank you for standing behind me every step of the way. Thank you for helping mold me who I am today. I know I'm not perfect, but you show me that the sky is the limit and never to settle for second best. So thank you.